Welcome, and today we're talking about the skin, otherwise known as the integument, which in some old language means covering. The skin covers your body, forming a barrier to and interface with the outside world. It's kind of like a suit that is strong, pliable, easy to clean, and self-renewing. Skin is also known as the cutaneous membrane, so the integumentary system is the skin and its derivatives, accessory structures like hair, nails, glands, and other things. Like any membrane, the cutaneous membrane consists of two layers, an epithelial layer overlying a connective tissue layer. The epithelial layer is derived from the ectoderm, which also gives rise to the nervous system, while the dermis is made out of connective tissue, which is derived from the mesoderm. Two tissues combine to form a common function, makes an organ, which makes your skin an organ, and is actually the largest organ, even if it's actually relatively simple. Each of these layers are going to perform specific functions. They have different properties, and they have unique clinical as well as social and cultural implication. Understanding the layers of skin and the properties are important in many clinical applications. So here we're going to go over the functions of the integumentary system in general as we cover the specific different layers and accessory structures will go into more detail about which component carries out the specific function. So anatomy is an observational science. That is, we observe the gross structure of the body and tissues under microscopes. But sometimes the function of something is not so obvious. To understand the function of, of a structure or an enzyme or a gene, scientists often carry out what are called loss of function experiments. Here they're going to somehow remove the object and see what happens. So here we're going to carry out a little thought experiment in which we look at these hypothetical skinless people here and see what happens to them without the skin. The idea being that you don't know what you got till it's gone. So the most immediate danger these skinless people are going to face is the danger of dehydration. All the interstitial fluid within your body's tissues would evaporate in most settings and this sexy muscle couple becomes beef jerky pretty soon. And the skin is pretty much waterproof, meaning your bodily fluids are going to remain inside your body. But waterproof also means you will not soak up water like a sponge if you're to jump in your bathtub. The second most dangerous part of being skinless is that you would be completely vulnerable to pathogen infection. So when the rona wants to get inside your body, it'll do it through your respiratory epithelia or your eyes, not through your skin, so long as your skin is intact. And in all seriousness, these two factors, dehydration, pathogen infection, constitute the most serious emergencies seen in third degree burn patients when they've lost a significant area of skin. So the other protection that skin provides is against physical abuse, a protecting underlying soft tissue from abrasion, bumping, scrapes, and cuts that would damage delicate blood vessels and nerves underneath. It also provides protection against chemical trauma. You could think of that when you get soap in your eyes or breathe in some harsh chemical that burns the inside of your nose. So these three constitute physical protection from environmental hazards. That's probably the main function of your skin. Second most important function you would see when those skinless people experience temperatures below body temperatures or when it got too hot. Your skin helps guard against temperature extremes and has mechanisms we'll discuss to maintain body temperature. Thermoregulation is also due to the layer of insulation provided by the subcutaneous layer of the hypodermis, although that's not technically part of the integumentary system. These skinless people would also be vulnerable to muscle weakness and osteoporosis because skin helps with synthesis of vitamin D3. And skin is the organ in direct Interface with the external environment. Sensory receptors embedded within your skin provide the most intimate, close-range environmental information. That is, what is touching you? Is it soft? Is it pointy? How hard is it pressing on you? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is there a little bug crawling across your skin? When we get to the brain, you will learn about the sensory homunculus, which is the map of your body in your brain that is based on these sensory receptors embedded within your skin. And last, you do excrete some toxins, excess salt, urea, from your skin, although not as much 
as some people who are trying to sell you expensive things would make you believe. The vast majority of that leaves your body through the urinary system. So these are the functions of the integumentary system overall, and as we get to each specific layer, sublayer, and structures, I'm going to relate their st structure to that particular function. All right, so like any membrane, the cutaneous membranes, we have uh, an epithelial layer here called the epidermis. The epidermis has four to five sublayers. These are layers of different cells located at different depths of the epidermis, and each sublayer has a specific role in the various functions of the skin that we discussed. And then underneath we have the connective tissue layer called the dermis, and the dermis has two sublayers, and these are based on the location as well as the type of connective tissue. So the thickness of your skin is going to vary around the body, and that's usually associated with the type of protection required. For example, just compare the palm of your hand with the back of your hand to give you an idea of that. The skin also includes these accessory structures embedded within the cutaneous membrane. So considering your skin is typically thinner than the width of your pencil eraser, the numbers here are pretty impressive. For every square inch of your skin, you have 65 hairs of different types, at least where you have hair. You also have about 650 sweat glands helping you to cool off, as well as sebaceous glands to moisten your skin. Accessory structures, you also have many different types of receptors and nerve fibers, and your skin is highly vascularized, that is, has an extensive blood supply that it can hold up to 5% of your blood. So that's a general overview of the skin. Next time we're going to look at the specific layers and sublayers and see how they contribute to the functions of the skins we just discussed here. See you next time.